Quinn Rampage Jack. Drops him. This is Frankie the answer, Edgar. Hey, this is Rashad Evans, and you listen to MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas, with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! Hello, fight fans. Welcome to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. You're here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, and Joey Vonner on this Drive Time Friday. We have a great show lined up for you and a great guest lined up for you later in the show. UFC fighter Eric Koch joins us on the line to talk about his upcoming fight with Ricardo Lamas at UFC on Fox 6. And we're going to break it down and give you our picks for UFC on FX7, Bisbing, and Vitor Belfort happening tomorrow night. But first... Let's talk a little bit about the premiere of Bellator on Spike and uh, what everyone thought about the production, the numbers, and then, of course, the Michael Chandler fight. Well, Michael Chandler's just a beast. A beast. Just absolute beast mode. Rick Horn is no joke, dude. Olympic Judica, uh, you know, to, to see the way that Chandler was able to take him down with ease, I was beyond impressed. I knew he was there, but he's there. He, he's, he's, he's got a bright future in front of him. Absolutely, you know he made the he made a big impression in the Alvarez fight with his striking, and this fight he went back to the wrestling. Uh, I didn't like the hand so low, the chin kind of up, you know. But hey, when you change levels like that and you hit takedowns like that, I guess you can get away with it. Absolutely, but not just not just you know uh, one single wrestling move. I mean, he hit two different takedowns. Different. He hit the single leg in the first and the power double in the second, and he had great defense against the one time Han tried to uh, to Ushimata throw a judo throw, he he reacted perfect, made it back to his feet, came out striking. I mean, he looked really, really impressive. And the thing is, he's such a nice, likable guy. He's good looking, he's friendly, friendly he's funny, he's charming. There's a, He's a guy that you can get behind and really build and can carry a promotion. Much, li- much like George St. Pierre, as as the UFC was really pushing, you know, and coming more mainstream, they had this likable, good looking, friendly fighter that they could get behind and really put in the spotlight. Yeah, it's funny. He He's very... Uh, interactive with the fans on Twitter, and and it's very amusing when you see fans writing to him. It's so cool to watch a guy on TV that I see in church every Sunday. Right, you know, like like he really is a good person. There, you know, we we do know that there are fighters out there that that praise the likes of of higher beings and don't really act the same way beyond the public eye, but Michael Chandler is one of those guys. Are, are you referring I'm to I'm not referring particular? to anybody. Nobody. No, I, I just wanted to know because you said there are guys out there, so I was trying to figure out which, which so I could look at them and, and, and judge them like you're... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> judge them like you're judging I'm a them. judger. Yeah, judging their faith. <laughs> Who are you? Judge not, Phil, for you shall be judged. <laughs> uh, I just think Chael Sonnen said it best, that if, if God had any bearings on what happened in a cage on a Saturday night, that all his beliefs would be flushed down the toilet. Right. <laughs> But so, what, how how'd you guys grade grade be, the Bell- Bellator? Bellator I, you know, um, we uh, production wise, it's nice to see it in HD. Uh, it looked better than MTV two, a hundred percent better. I wouldn't say you know C plus. Yeah, it definitely looked better. I think um, you know I, I lost that Saturday afternoon Kung Fu Channel five back in like nineteen eighty feeling when I watched the fights. But um, you know, it, definitely a step forward and an improvement for Bellator. Yeah, and for me, you know, like I said, I gave it a C plus. Uh, when when I compare it to a boxing model, what I mean by that is that you got a big, huge pay per view card, and you have a Tuesday night fight show. It didn't look like the pay per view card. It looked a lot more like the Tuesday night fight show. But hey, that's what they are. They're a Thursday night fight show. So they they they. I think there's some improvements need to be made. You know, especially when you look at the competitor, the production quality for their competitor, the UFC. Um, but the fights delivered. It was still good. It's still MMA in the middle of the week. Fight show consistently, which I which I love. So um, C plus production, de- overall product, everything delivered. Uh, a minus B plus. Yeah, I'm about the same. And one thing though, I find, and not to not to hate on them at all, but this is just kind of amusing to me, just in the difference, the disparity between the the top dog and the number two dog is that. For Bellator, the huge rating success was about an average of what nine hundred fifteen thousand was it? I don't know, but I do believe it was the very first time it trended on Twitter. Wow! But so that was the average was nine hundred fifteen thousand. Somewhere, somewhere between there was the average 
uh, for for their the, the, the their show and the worst rated lowest episodes of the Ultimate Fighter were about that as well, right? The, right, in the 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 low to mid nine hundred thousand. So it's just kind of funny to see the difference between the the number one and the number two. That being said, though, uh, I think they're going to grow. They're going to the more of the layman fan, not the diehards, they're going to start tuning tuning in, and we'll see those numbers rise. Yep, one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> <laughs> you said it like a hillbilly. You didn't say like a New Yorker. You say one man's trash is another man's treasure. <laughs> well, he's been my treasure, so he was somebody else's trash. Ouch. Oh, I'm Ouch. only kidding. You're trash. I was only kidding with you, man. Ouch. I was playing with you. <laughs> But, but uh, uh, just the, the the thing that had me not worried but wondering is they're putting a lot of stock in Big Mo, and they bought and they brought in a lot of fighters right now, you know, big bigger name fighters for the tournament. Legends, it, le- yeah, <laughs> Babalu the legend. But Babalu and Seth Petruzzelli, both the bigger names, both the guys you would think on paper who were gonna move on, who were gonna steamroll their opponents because they were fighting more of unknown, lesser tested, lesser skilled opponents, and they both got steamrolled. So I, I just don't hope the trend is emerging. I don't. Want, I love Mo. I want to see him succeed, and I don't want to see you know him fall, but also then put him up there and he falls. True, true. They are putting a lot of stock in him. And that's a lot of pressure too, though. It's almost like what the UFC is doing with with Ronda Rousey. You know, for him, it's it's they're 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 you know they gave him his own special. Put putting him on the spotlight. Yeah, yeah. So did you watch the special? Yeah, thought it was pretty good. Okay. What do you think the chances are that Rampage winds up in Bellator? I don't know. I don't even want to think about Rampage right now. You know, I don't even think Rampage is thinking about Rampage right now. <laughs> you think he still fights after this? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It depends on if he needs the money. What do you think, Joe? I I, I never know what to expect with him. <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you complaining about that you get paid so much money, the f- or or the fact that they let you do movies because they own the likeness, they don't have to let you do movies, or the fact that when you went in your monster truck and went on a rampage through downtown LA, they supported you, paid for everything, had your back. Like, where's the complaint, man? Where why do you have it so rough? He definitely doesn't. Yeah, so I I don't get it, man. And then in and above that, you know, we I talked about this in the last show. If that is your intention, though, if you're dissatisfied and displeased with the organization and you do want to move on, you want to be in a position where you can leverage that and, 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 and drive a negotiation between organizations by telling the whole world that you hate where you're at, which is the top playing organization in the world. That lessens your stock. That, that gives your, the people you're going to no, negotiate with uh, an advantage over you. you know, they know you want to leave. Yeah, especially when you say, I'm willing to take a pay cut. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, well, get ready because it's, it's going to happen. Exactly. Gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> your wish is my command. Yeah. One man's garbage yeah. is another man's treasure. Uh, and also, of course, we have the fight card coming up tomorrow night, UFC on FX7 happening. Uh, man. I'll tell you, it's it's a really cool. I mean, we have four big days in, in the sports world. We had Bellator last night. Tonight, RFA is on Access, which you know, good fights on there. Tomorrow is UFC on FX Seven. Bisping versus Belfort, uh, interesting fight, and then Championship Sunday for football. On you know, it's a good weekend. Good weekend. What's on Sunday? Championship football, buddy. What's that? <laughs> okay, here, here's the you thing. Play with, you play with your feet. I, no, there's no. a little round ball. It's black and white. They usually. Oh no, no, that's that's soccer. No, that's, that's football everywhere else. <laughs> football. No, uh, you know what? I used to be a big football fan. You know, I still have my teens, but I used to always go to every game when I lived in the Bay Area, and I did the same in Denver. I went in Denver. I went to all the games there of my team, and and I went to a bunch of Bronco games. Um, but but football with baseball and all the sports, uh, basketball. I just. Ever since I got out here, I just kind of fell off and have been only combat sports orientated. And and the the I tried, in fact, my team, the Giants, in the World Series, you know. So I'm trying to tune in and watch, and you know, I haven't watched baseball in years, but I'm just trying to watch the World Series because that's my team and bring my girl in. And I was bored, like third inning out. I'm like, man, this is boring. And then football, someone killed. You know, I still like watching the highlights. Of football Did somebody just cool. say Giants. Yeah. San Francisco Giants. Yeah, I say I know. I'm just uh, you thinking I'm playing with them. No, but uh but <laughs> World Series champs. Joe winks at me. I know, I know. I was gonna say, you mean New York Giants, the Super Bowl champs? With football, do you know how much it's a three hour, three to four hour show, three to five hour show. Do you know how much and someone actually told me this, I didn't believe him, so I went and verified it. Do you know how much actual playing time goes on in a game? Oh, very little. Very little. It's probably like fifteen minutes. Not even that. Eleven and a half minutes. <sighs> 
11 and a half minutes of actual playing time. So I'm like, all right, so now it's official. Now I'll just be, be being a diehard fight fan where you get 15 minutes of action. You know, how can I how can I go back to it? I can't. Or or you get 25 minutes worth of action. Boom. 25 minutes. Or if you're Michael Chandler, it's only like <laughs> seven minutes. So Belfort and uh, Bisping, I think they go 25 minutes. Is it a five? It's five rounds. I, I think it's a five-round fight, and I think it goes 25 minutes. I'm with you. You know, main event fight. Yeah, it should be. I, I don't know. I, I look at. I think it's an interesting fight. It's very interesting in the middleweight division because Belfort. You know, he's coming off of a loss to the light heavyweight champ John Jones, and pretty much, I'd say he gave John Jones the toughest test so far that Jones has tested. Uh, you know, in his title reign, and and to Vito's credit, he went in that fight with a broken hand. Yep. We didn't ever see that explosion of, of fists of fury that we waited for from Belfort. I kept on waiting for it. Where is this going to be? Where is it going to be? And it just didn't come. And you found out afterwards he had a broken hand. So to, to, to not do what he's so good at doing and to come into a fight and give a fight like he did, man, he, that's impressive. Yeah. And, and Bisping, you know, he's coming off the win over Brian Stan. And actually, I think if, let's be honest, if you include the Chael Sonnen fight, you know, dude should be on a five, six fight win streak. You know, I gave I scored Chael for Chael. You know, so but but th- that being said, he's still they're saying he's next in line. If he wins, he's next in line to to face Anderson Silva. Really though, when you think about at the end of the day, it's not you know who deserves a title fight. It's what title fight can you sell? He's the only real sellable middleweight out there. He will sell it. I, now he's not on Chael caliber of talking, but the European appeal, the international appeal, and then his level of talking. I think when it comes to, to, to trash talking and running your mouth, I think he's number two in the I think he actually might be making a run at the title based on all the comments he said about Victor Belfort this fight. Yes. That is a good point, but think about it. Who's done most of the trash talking right now? Who started well, the little bit of a ruffle there the other night? Yeah, v, well, Vitor started things, and Biz Bing's been, you know, he, he went off the other night, and if you haven't seen the interview, look it up on the internet. I, I cannot say the stuff over the air that he, he went into, but it was... You can. At, well, it's most of it, but I, I don't want to get into it because it's just way too much and it's funny. But like, I, I think Bisping needs to be careful here. Okay, I think you know this could end one of two ways: very quickly with Vitor winning, or very long and drawn out with Bisping, you know, picking him apart for five rounds. Now, we haven't seen Vitor Belfort go to a decision since like 2007. All right, so you know whether he wins or loses, those fights get finished. So it, it's going to be interesting to see if if Bisping can take him to a decision. Because I don't see him finishing him. But I, I also don't know if Vitor can land that heavy shot and knock Bisping out again. No, I'm with you. And, and what you said about, I agree 100%, it's either going to be quick and fast or long and drawn out. But that's how you describe every single Vitor Belfort fight. Yep. When you pick him to win or lose, you always say he's either going to finish him quick or it's going to go later in the rounds and he'll lose. Which is the truth when you look at his, when you look at his resume, his fight career. That's exactly what has happened. But uh, I agree with you 100%. Um, one thing, too, that will take into consideration is we always talk about being in Brazil, the Brazil factor. With, with Michael Bisping, you got you have a guy who relishes playing the villain role. I think with the booze, I think he's one of these people that the booze make him better. Some fight, some people, they get in a fight because the booze makes them think they're better than they are. Get it, booze? That means the liquid booze. Yeah, the That's booze. a little play on words there for but, Joey. Uh, but for, for, for Bisping, when people boo, he loves it. He likes being the villain. And I think this comes down to a style matchup. They always say, golden rule, styles make fights. Vitor Belfort. He likes to plant, wait, and explode. He needs someone in front of him or coming straight at him. Michael Bisping is stick and move. Tons of fast, tons of fast footwork, quick punches in and out all over the place. Vitor has trouble with that style of quick in and out people moving, you know, throwing lots of punches, taking angles, circling, making him chase. You know, he doesn't do very well dealing with that. And I think this comes out to a, a styles make fights, you know, exact situation where, where Bisping, if, as long as he doesn't get caught early, which I don't think he will, will pitter patter, pick, pick shots, and, and, and take it the distance. So I'm picking Bisping for this. Do you think that uh, Vitor being so vocal that maybe he's nervous about this fight or you don't think there's any nerves or maybe trying to just show off a little bit in front of the Brazilian crowd? Uh, no, you know, I just think B- Vitor needs what he needs to get himself up for the fight. Yeah, Vitor, Vitor needs to get up. Yeah. Get it up. <laughs> Wait, why, I, I, the, yeah. <laughs> Bite your tongue. Bite your tongue there, Mr. Vana. No, I'm, I'm, I like Vitor. I'm friends with the guy, and I'm, I'm a fan of his, but I just, being honest, you know, I think stylistically... Bisping should beat him. And 
for the division, for the fights to make afterwards, I think it's a better fight. I think Bisping, uh, you know, I'm more interested to see Bisping with Anderson than I am to see Vitor Anderson, too. Yeah, nobody wants to see that. Yeah. So if we're all doing our picks? Yeah, so I'm going with Bisping. Billy? I think it's it's going to be unanimous. Yeah, I'm going with Michael Bisping as well. Oh, uh, ho, ho. what does Heidi say? Oh. I'm going to go ahead and take Bisping, too. Oh. Damn, unanimous. Armando? Telemundo! I'm, I'm, I'm on line with everybody else. Right. Oh, wow. no. I, now I, I, I'm going to have to change it just oh, to bump wait, the track. No, I'm just kidding. And, and is, am I mis- is Vitor the favored? Yeah. Oh, hit, hit the casino. Right. Unanimous decision here. Right. Everybody in the MMA fight corner. Joe, you still can give it. Official. What'd you pick? Oh, no. It's Bisping. Bisping? Bisping? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right. It's unanimous. Michael Bisping. All right. What about Dalloway Seraphin? Okay, for this one is is the, the the two factors for me that play into this is whether CB can be effective with his wrestling yep. or not, and the Brazil factor how it affects both of them. Um, I think Seraphin, you have a guy who who could have and should have and would have won Brazil Ultimate Fighter had he not got hurt. I think he's got something to prove. I think he's looking forward to this. He really wants to come out in oppressive fashion. CB's a guy who his the, the his head is questionable. You know, I think he'll break under a situation like that. And I think uh, I I think because of that, he won't be as effective with his wrestling. He won't be able to get the wrestling into play. And I I think Seraphin's going to win this fight. Yeah, Dalloway's best bet is is usually the wrestling because the stand up is not really there. Uh, and Seraphin's not a type of guy you want to go to the ground with either, though. I mean, six of his seven wins are by submission. Right. And Dalloway does have a tendency to leave himself open when he's going for submissions. Not a, not something he wants to do. Um, yeah, I, I think I can't base Dalloway's last win uh, as an improvement. He got knocked out the two times before that. You know, was his win over Miller that exciting? No. Uh, was that Dalloway getting better or Miller just being Jason Miller? So. I got Seraphim <laughs> winning this one. What about Gonzaga Rothwell? Okay, Gonzaga Rothwell. Um, this is this this is a style style matchup. You've got Gonzaga guy who who likes to trade, but he forgets that he's a jiu-jitsu fighter. He's got great jits. You know, you got Rothwell who's got great striking and he's been getting better. You know, he he looked a little rough at first, but his last fight, not just, you know, the effectiveness of knocking out Shaw, but how he looked physically, he looked slim, he looked in shape. I think in a stand-up fight, I think Rothwell picks Gonzaga apart. And if Gonzaga tries to stand with him, he'll get blasted. The thing is, Gonzaga, where he's going to be at his best, is getting this fight to the ground. But the wrestling defense of Rothwell is great, and the wrestling offense of Gonzaga isn't great. Remember in the, in the, uh, the um, uh, what's the champion's name? Velasquez Kane. fight. Kane Velasquez. Kane had a tough time taking down and holding down Ben Rothwell, and Kane's one million times better of a wrestler than Gonzaga. Maybe not a million times, but it's a high number. But he's a way better wrestler than Gonzaga. I don't see Gonzaga getting, getting this to the ground, and I see Rothwell picking him apart. Yeah, like where depending where the fight goes, if it stays standing up against the cage, Rothwell's going to dominate. He likes to bully his opponents, uh, and like you said, he looked great in his last fight against Shab. I think it was like a seventy-second knockout, but not just his performance, the way he looked. The guy's been in the sport for a real long time, and he said he's finally gotten it right when it comes to training, nutrition, taking care of himself. We'll see if he looks the same tomorrow night. Rothwell to win this one too. Yep. Yeah, I'm going with Rothwell as well. Yeah, Gabe Gonzaga, you know, black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, but forgets that he do- he he just likes to stand with you. Silly. Right. So am I the <laughs> only one that thinks because he's in Brazil he might win? I don't know. Nah, dude, Gabriel? The, Gabe hasn't been in the cage in over a year. Well, I agree. So I agree. you know, I, just, and I I don't I don't think that's gonna. There are times where I think the Brazil factor plays plays Maybe plays a role, but not. I don't think this one. But let's step back real quick. I want to get Billy, Heidi, and, and Armando. What did you guys think of CB Dalloway and Daniel Serafin? I'm going to go ahead and pick Seraphin. I like his style, and I think he's hungry coming off of that tough uh, thing where he got cut. Yeah. Billy? I think you guys are right, but I'm going to go with CB Dalloway in this fight. Oh, you think God. we're right, but you're going to go the other way. What does that even mean? <laughs> what does that mean? You don't need to understand. <laughs> like, I've been <laughs> spoken to okay. oh my from a God. high MMA power, God, and they told me to take to Billy. CB Dalloway <laughs> hey. in that fight. And, uh, okay, uh, I'm taking and Dalloway. Uh, actually, okay. I'm thinking his, his size, his reach should help him a lot, and I'm not you know, I only saw a few uh, uh, tough Brazil, so I'm not over the up to Well, this dude, dude Daniel yeah. Serafin is a beast. Uh-huh. And he pro- like Joey says, he probably would have won the tournament mm-hmm. had he not gotten injured. And had to the out. unknown factor here, so I'm going Absolutely with Bollowin. Absolutely so, Okay, okay so, 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 so but I think it's, and I think it's both, nice. And you picked, you picked Gonzaga as well, Armando. I, no, I did not. You picked Rothwell? No, I didn't. Well, 
He was saying because of Brazil. I, I'm just saying because of Brazil. It's, so what are you saying though? So, but well, I, who are you I'm going to take I'm going to take Gonzaga. How's that? There okay, and Heidi. I'm going to go ahead and stick with Rothwell, like y'all. All yeah. right. So yeah. so the, yeah. All right. All right. All right. So the 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 first fight on the main card, Habib. Go ahead, Phil. Say the last name. <laughs> Nurmag Omedov. Okay. Against Tiago Tavares. Wow. Should be a great fight. I think it all sums down to the shirt that uh, Habib wore to the weigh-ins in Brazil today. Showed bigger gojones than anybody I've ever known. It said, if Sambo was easy, it'd be called jiu-jitsu. <laughs> to do that in Brazil, has take it takes guts. All right, and he, dude, the guy's got credentials. He's a, a you know two-time combo world Seer, uh, champion, Naga champion. Uh, Tiago's in for a world of hurt tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with. You. I don't think a world of hurt, but uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I I am picking Habib. Um, I, I think he's tough. I think he's got the style. And for me, this fight, when I watch it, it plays out. I, I think it's going to be almost a replay of the of the T Bell fight stylistically. To to me, uh, Gleason and uh, and Tavares they fight similar. They move similar. They do everything kind of the similar style. Uh, and I think it'll be a replay. I think the thing is, is Tiago's best bet is to take this fight down to the ground. Only problem is, is no one's been able to take. Habib down ten times. He's been attempted to get a takedown, and no one's and oh? no that, one's been able right? to. No one's been able to. Yeah. Oh, so so oh, you and me, Habib. What do you Habib, think? Habib. 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 Ha- Habib. 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 Okay, we all Unanimous. got Habib. We're in sync a lot here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. We'll talk a little bit more about this card when we come back later in the show. Maybe we'll revisit it a little bit. With the MMA Fight Corner, sponsored by Fast Cash, title owns with three great locations and rates at nine point nine five percent. Oh, wait a second, that's seven point nine five percent. How can you go wrong? Competitors tell you they're giving you half off, but half off of what? These are the lowest rates in town. People are, man, Mike Tichel will not be beat or undersold. Call Fast Cash's new location at 702-822-4456. Tell them that Billy sent you and receive $50 off your first payment. And i got to talk a little bit about LASIK in Nevada. I have to tell you about this amazing experience I had here in Las Vegas. I recently had the LASIK procedure done, like I've been telling you guys for the past month now, to correct my eyes, to better than 2020. I don't need glasses anymore, and I'm telling you it's like a Miracle. Dr. Rothman and his staff were incredible through the whole process and extremely, extremely professional. I urge anyone who has thought about getting lazy to speak with my man, Dr. Rothman. He offers a free consultation and 50% off premium LASIK when you mention my name, Billy Mira, and 0% financing available. Call 702-636-2010. You'll be delighted you did. I know I was, and I can actually see now, and you'll be glad you did too when we come back. Eric Koch joins us on the line. MMA Fight Corner, Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. This is Frank Mir, and you're listening to the MMA Fight Corner. The MMA Fight Corner. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. Here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Varner, and Heidi Fang. And this segment is sponsored by LASIK of Nevada, live from LASIK of Nevada Studios. Um, joining us on the line now is uh, UFC fighter Eric Koch, who faces Ricardo Lamas on January 26th at UFC on Fox 6. Eric, welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner. Are you there, buddy? Hey, what's up, brother? What's going on, man? Now, Hey, not much, man. Just got nothing to run and going to have my uh, dinner here. What's that man just showing. What's for dinner? Dinner, just a little bit of chicken with uh, a salad. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Are you on your cell phone, Eric? Yeah. Okay. We got to get into a good spot. You're, cutting, you're getting a little spotty. Can you hear me now? I can hear, it's like the commercial. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I think I think we can hear you now. Can you hear us? Yeah. All right, then we're okay then. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we're losing you. No! Eric! <laughs> Walk outside. Bring your dinner outside. You there, Eric? You know what? Let, let, let Eric, hang on the back. phone. We'll give you a call back. We'll try try this again. Yeah, he's let's not driving and eating, is he? No, I hope he's getting ready for dinner. He's got he's got a you know he's a week out of a fight, very interesting fight. I'm uh, excited for it. Yeah, you know Lamos, Lamos is a tough dude, and Eric's in a very interesting situation. Um, I, I jokingly call want to say, and I don't even know. Maybe we should get him on the line before we say this. But what do uh, Alex Smith, Dan Henderson, and Eric Koch all have in common? Damn, stump me. They, they've all lost their spot due to injury. 
Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Okay. You know, so Eric Koch's type. Well, he well, he had a shot, and now you know, due to that, now he's got got this one. Eric, you back there? You back there? Yep. Ah, there All we right, go. There you go. Now, last time we spoke to you, you were getting ready to fight Jose Aldo on a fight basically I think nobody else wanted. And you wholeheartedly stepped in but then had to withdraw uh, due to an injury. Now you're back and fighting on a huge stage on the 26th. Take us through the roller coaster ride you've been on since the summer, Eric. Man, it's, it's been a hell of a year, man. Ups and downs. You know, some of the biggest ups and the biggest downs I've ever been through. So... It was definitely a roller coaster, man, even without fighting. And uh, it was just one of those things, man. It, you know, it sucked that I, I had to give up the title shot. And, you know, it hurt for a while. But, you know, now I'm just focused. I, I More than anything, I just want to get back into the cage. So, so you've gotten over it? Yeah, I'm over it. All right. So then let me ask you, what do you, Dan Henderson, and Alex Smith have in common? I have no idea. Dude, you're a 49ers fan. You know this. You all are lo- Niners fan? You're not a Niner fan? No, I'm a big Niner fan. Yeah. I didn't know they were Niner fans. No, 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 no. I'm talking about <laughs> oh. Alex Smith, the quarterback. Well, the former quarterback. Oh, okay. You all lost your uh, spot due to injury when that's not supposed to happen, man. It's not supposed to happen. Yeah. No, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Okay, so... You 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 get get you're given the shot. You earn the shot. You step up. You ask for the shot. Circumstances that have nothing to do with you make make you know the fight doesn't happen. Now you're not fighting for the title. How far out have they told you? Hey, get one more and you're gonna win. Uh, you're the you win this. You're the number one contender. I mean, how far out out are you from that shot that you earned? You know, you know, I've I've heard a couple things, and you know. From from what I get, you know, just where Lama stands right now with win over Swanson, win over Hayoki, who was number number two at the time, I think this is definitely the title eliminator. You know, it, nothing set in stone, but I definitely think it is. So you know, it's it's whatever, man. Like I said, I'm the title thing. It's whatever, man. I got to get past Ricardo Lamas. I'm not even thinking about it. You know, it's it's one of those things that'll come up when it comes up. Right now, man, I'm I'm itching just to get into the cage and and fight. That's that's all I want to do. Yeah, get back in there. And it's funny because Lamas is the guy, like you said, he took Hayoki. Hayoki was the one he said he was offered a title shot, said, no, I don't want it. I need another fight. And and then he lost it. And Lamas is the guy that, that now the two of you, I see the two of you as um, number one contenders. This is definitely a title eliminator. But when you look at Lamas, where do you stack up best against him? Um, I just think, you know, I'm the most dynamic dude he's ever fought. Uh, I, also think, yeah, I, think, I think the biggest thing he, he gives people problems with, he's a big, strong featherweight. You know, he's just real physical, real strong. And uh, I don't think he's fought anybody like me. So um, I, I just think, you know, I think he's a great fighter. I don't think he's bad in any area. But I, I honestly, I think I can take it anywhere. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely looking for a finish. Yeah, he is, a like you say, he is a big featherweight. Dude used to fight at 155 a lot, so, you know, he's uh, definitely going to have some size there. Well, I should be fighting at 55. No, <laughs> <laughs> no uh, yeah, no, he's he's a big featherweight, um, but so am I. So it, it'll be, be a clash of the titans here. On paper, he has the. It seems to be the 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 advantage in grappling. I mean, with his wrestling background and being a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, it almost looks like a classic matchup of striker versus wrestler. Um, do you think? You know, I mean, we've seen him. We've seen him strike, but definitely that's where your strength is. You know, you're a Duke Rufus product. Do you think he's going to avoid the stand up at all costs and try to keep this fight on the mat? Um, you know, we'll we'll see. Uh, honestly, I'm I'm comfortable on the mat as well. Um. Obviously, I like to keep it standing. I like to, you know, give fans what they like to see, and that's a, a stand-up fight. I, I, nothing like getting a knockout. But, uh, you know, my ground game is very underrated because people never see me there. So I actually have seven wins by submission, too. You know, whenever it's gone to the mat, I've submitted anybody or submitted them. The only person I didn't was, was Chad. That was my lone loss. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, man. I'm, I'm down – Take fight wherever, but uh, I definitely like would like to keep it standing. Do you think uh, that Lamas is gonna the look at the Mendez fight and, and 
You know, just I know you can't speculate, and I know you have to be ready for whatever. But in the back of your mind, are you saying to yourself, "Hey, man, I'm thinking this guy's going to try to Mendez me. He's going to try to get me down and hold me down." And and if so, how far has your wrestling defense progressed since then? I mean, I know you guys have uh, Ben Askren with you up there, so you know there's a, there's a lot of a higher wrestling IQ coming out of the camp now. Oh uh, yeah, no, man, I'm, I'm not even the same fighter when I fought Mendez. Um, I, you know, you know, stand up and on the ground, and of course, like you said, adding Ben, uh, games got so much better. So, I, you know, if if I do, tr- if he, he does try to mend as me and take me down and control me, it's not gonna happen. Did we? Did we you just, just? You just coined a phrase. We just coined a phrase. He's gonna Mendez him. <laughs> Mendez. <laughs> you got Munson. You got not Mendez. To, not to be confused with, with Menendez. That's where uh, you know. That's where the brothers kill the parents. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Golf a bit. How how, uh, how helpful was it that Anthony Pettis has got a fight at the same t- time? You know, uh, with camp. Oh, awesome man. Uh, he and Pascal Krause is also on the fighting on that card. Um, we're all training together and we're all fighting together. So it makes it a lot easier just going through a camp and, uh, you know, going through all the same struggles and having that brotherhood there. Um, it's, it's awesome, man. We haven't fought on the same card since WEC days. So uh, I'm pumped, man. I miss the speaking WEC of which, days. And, yeah, WEC, great. Now, speaking of that, you talk about what you guys go through in the gym. What is your thought real quick on the new documentary that came out, uh, Occupation Fighter by Chad George? Have you I seen actually it? haven't seen it. Bro. Yeah, it's one yeah. of the, it's we're finally starting to get to see and we're seeing a few of them with John John Fitch the uh, such great heights. We're seeing that the other side of the sport that you guys aren't aren't rock stars and like people perceive that you actually go through living hell to get to where you are and to succeed oh, in this sport. Yeah, yeah, it's uh people think we live like rock stars and it's oh, I you know, I wish I had a job like yours, not an eight, an eight hour job. My more than an eight hour job. <laughs> I get up at nine. I'm doing strength and conditioning. I'm dieting. I'm doing everything. Everything I do in a day pertains to 15 minutes in a cage. And a lot of people don't think about it. And uh, it's it's definitely it's not it's not all you know just rock star playboy. It, not at all. Not at all. And you know people think we make a lot more money than we do. You know. They, they, I, I swear people think you're millionaires because you fight on TV. You know they think you're a millionaire, but uh. But no, man, it's story. It's a job. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with that. Well, how hard is it? I mean, like, you know, you talk about, you know, you're getting up, you're doing strength and conditioning right away. Then you go get punched in the face for a while or you get your arms snapped back a few different ways. And, and you, you know, you're constantly putting your body through the through the just the awful things. All right. And your mind, too. How do you re- get away from that? How do you break the monotony of the training? Family, man. Family and friends, man. I'm a big movie buff. Go watch movies, play video games, you know, play a couple board games. Just things like that, man. Family is probably the greatest getaway, you know. Um, just family and friends spending time and nothing big, man. I'm I'm a simple dude, you know. It doesn't take much to make me happy. So just little things like that uh, make me happy. What was the last movie you went and saw? I actually, last night I went and saw the new Arnold movie. Was I had cool? to go do it. Was is that, it good? The, new, the it was good, man. I loved it. I oh, thought it was I, awesome. I'm seeing the commercial last night, and I'm telling my girl, "Oh, we got to go see it." And she's like, "Really?" I'm like, yeah. "How could I not? It's Arnold." This really? is the same Arnold, conversation dude. I had in mind. I think every guy yeah. had the same exact conversation across the country with their girl. Yeah, they were sitting down last night. They were watching something on TV, probably Bellator, and all of a right? sudden it was yeah. like, "Dude, Arnold's got a new movie coming out." Oh, we're going to see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to do yeah, it, dude, do it dude. now, do it. Yeah, it's a must, man. It's a must. The guy keeps getting older, and he's still making movies. It's awesome. So it was pretty. It was pretty cool. It was pretty badass. It was awesome, dude. It was. It was awesome. All I right. really enjoyed it. So there you go. What is it called? The Last Stand, Last right? Last Stand, yeah. Last stand, yep. The last stand with Arnold Schwarzenegger gets it's a it's Coke approved. I was gonna yeah. say it's Eric Coke, Coke approved. approved. <laughs> it's Coke approved. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's great, man. All right, well, Eric, we wish you all the best. We would. Hey. Want, we want you to come back with a W, man. Hell yeah, man! I uh, definitely will. Thank you guys for uh, taking time to interview me, man. Hey, hey, uh, let everyone out there know uh, how they can get in touch with you. Your Twitter, you know, websites, anything like that. Um, yeah, you can, uh, follow me, follow me at newbreed04 on Twitter, and, uh, also just want to give a shout out to everybody Rufus Sport, 
Um, had an awesome camp, man. It's been a pleasure. Um, also, people check out uh, fighting fighting here pretty soon. Actually, RFA uh, Dustin Ortiz, uh, buddy I live with. Um, he trains here uh, with with Duke too. And then, of course, check our fights out on Fox. Um, me, Anthony, and uh, Pascal. Pascal's fighting on FX. And that'll be uh, next Saturday. And uh, thanks for everybody for the love, man. All the cokeheads out there, all my fans. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, do you and, get uh, do you get laughs whenever you say that when you drop that one? Yeah, versus, hey, all the time, man. But but that's my gimmick. That's how I, you know, my thing. Because people have a problem with my last name, like pronouncing it, because of the way it's spelled. So like, I got sick of coach, 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 you know, whatever. So I, I said, you know, well, I'm gonna call my fans cokeheads, <laughs> and it and it stuck. So you gotta call my, call my fans. You, you gotta make cokehead. a t-shirt. You gotta make a t-shirt that says like, I'm a cokehead. I got, a I got, a I got everything. Oh, uh, you rock! Where can people buy yeah. your t-shirts? Oh, uh, actually, I got right now. I don't have anything. I'm getting my home statement uh, made right now. So nothing yet, but after this fight, there will definitely be a line coming out. You you let us know because I want to rock. I'm a cokehead T-shirt. Hey man, I'll send one to you. You're an, you're awesome. <laughs> you're the man. You're an all-star. Eric Coke and his next fight is in Colombia. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, anyway, man, Eric, thanks so much for joining us. I mean, you're always a pleasure to have on the show. And like I said, we uh, expect great things out of you. Hey, thanks, guys. And one more shout out, just a big shout out to my dad. Even all my interviews, uh, big supporter. Bum to death and uh, bring back the W for him. Hell yeah! By the way, any predictions about the fight card tomorrow night? Bisping. Oh uh, man, it's a, it's a really good. Uh, honestly, in the Vitor Bisping, I want Vitor, but I think Bisping. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a we unanimous. Now that's yeah, Coke approved too. Yeah, that's, that's, that's you. Approved. You mirrored our sentiment exactly. We we want Vitor, <laughs> but we don't. We just think Styles make fights and Bisping will get him. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Vitor. You know. Man, let's do it. All right. Well, enjoy the fights and best of luck next weekend, buddy. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. All you cokeheads out there. That, that was awesome. That, that is what... so funny. It really is. Like, like that's going to, I wonder how many issues that's going to cause down the road. Dude. You know, just a bunch of kids wearing, I'm, I'm a cokehead at, a, at an event. Not good. I hope the higher ups of the studio and say this. What are you guys yelling cokehead for out on the radio? For? Well, the people on the shirts aren't even going to get it, though, unless they know how to say the name. Yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? It'll be almost like an MMA inside joke. But I'll tell you this, though Eric Coke, Cub Swanson, Dustin Poirier. Three guys that I love their styles. I love watching them fight. Coke was supposed to fight Poirier. He was supposed to fight Swanson. Swanson and Poirier are now fighting. I, I, I just I love those three. I want to see them all fight. Um, and I think they all they all you know do great things uh, w- with uh, Jose Aldo. Uh, yeah, definitely. One forty five divisions definitely really picking up. You got and right. then you just recently added the addition fighting next week. Clay Guida dropping down to 145. Really interested to see where he picks up after, you know. You think he changed his fight game? I mean, God. It's just, uh, yeah, let, listen, I, I, this sport is definitely a sport of what have you done for me lately, but let's remember all of the amazing fights Clay Guida has been in in the past. Okay. Just, just as long as he's know, not running away one, in this one, fight. One egg doesn't mean, you know, one rotten egg in the bunch doesn't mean the whole carton's ruined. All right. So just, you know, let's sit back. I'm really interested to see how he looks at featherweight. And, and the, the return of Hioki as well. He's taking on Hioki. Yeah. And I mean, really, you know. Was the number one lightweight, you know, for years. And then, and then our flyweight, excuse me. Um, <laughs> and behind when Jose Aldo took over, he was right behind Jose Aldo until he got knocked off. So um, that's that. just regardless, that's going to be a sick scrap. Yeah. And it's he's he's that prime example of like, take it when it's given to you. Right. Take that shot when it's given to you because you don't know when it's going to happen again and you don't know what's going to happen next. And he lives in a van down by a river. <laughs> down which just by goes, the river! Which just goes to show you that you can be successful living in a van down by the river. Now, um, we, we, <laughs> now have to, we, we have to do the, the news, right? But do we have to do, are we going to do the rest of the card or no? No, Our we picks? Uh, Yeah, you know what? You want to do them real quick? Do you want to do them real quick? Sure. Yeah, let's do them real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get to Heidi's hit list, which we haven't talked about, uh, not knowing what we're doing next, we have to get to it. We haven't done it in a couple there's, weeks. There's a, there's a lot of news. There's that's a lot of actually. news to get in there. All right. Uh, so, do you want to call the fights? Do you want to you want to say them or okay? So, uh, Castro and Vieira. Um, Castro, he was the runner-up for Tough Brazil. 
uh, he lost kind of a lackluster fight to uh, Ronnie Bezerra. You know, we know him as Jason. Yeah. Um, Ronnie Jason. Yeah, but Honey, he, Honey, Honey, Honey Jason. Uh, you know, he's a BJJ black belt, uh, but. Milton he trains with uh, Marilla Bustamante. Uh, apparently, he's the guy. I don't know if it's a hundred percent, but he invented the anaconda choke. So you have two great grapplers here. All right, I, I'm, but uh, I, I got Castro winning this one. I've never been impressed with with God, with with Castro. Um, what was his name on the show? He, of course, he went by a different name. Um, I can't remember the, his yeah, name on the show. We remember the show, but I was never impressed by him. You know, um, he didn't do anything in the fight that made me really. Think of him as something dynamic. I think when it does hit the ground, I think Vieira is, uh, is on another level of jiu-jitsu, so I'm going Milton. Yeah, well, Vieira's been in there with some of the best. He's very experienced. I mean, he's fought in pride. He's been in there with Jake Shields, Mock Sakurai. So he's been in there with the best of the best. And he fought both those guys at 170. Yes. And now he's fighting 145. Uh, all right, well, so we so we finally differ on one. Yes. We finally differ on one. All right, what about you, Billy? Who Uncle Milty. Uh, Uncle Milty, Heidi? Uncle I'm going Gofredo. Uh, all right. Okay. okay so we got two and two. Uh, Craig and Marks, Andrew Craig and Hani and Ronnie Marks. Hani Marks, another uh, Brazilian. Uh, this is Mark's second fight at middleweight. Uh, he's a good wrestler for a Brazilian. I have to say, real good wrestler for Brazilian. He's got a real good uh, ground and pound. Sent Aaron Simpson down to welterweight. Um, I, I I like him in this fight. I like Marks in this fight. I'm going the same way. Uh, uh, Craig coming out of Texas. You know he's. Uh, Hasn't really done anything to make me worry about, you know, think that he has something special to give. Or I just think everywhere the fights goes, what we've seen of Marks, Marks is better. Yeah, he was getting housed by Rafael Natal until he came back with that vicious head kick. Got the kick, You yeah. know, he got lucky on that one. And, I, you know, I, I don't see this fight going the same way. I got Marks. Uh, here's an interesting one. Diego Nunes and uh, Nick Lentz. Um, this is one of those ones... Lentz, the carny, uh, um, you know, he's not really that impressive to watch in the cage, but he's a grinder, he's a real good wrestler, and I think that may be the the marking of this fight is the wrestling. I, I think the wrestling dictates where this fight goes. This fight, my breakdown for this fight is almost exactly the same as my C.B. Dalloway Seraphin breakdown. I said, if Lentz can get the wrestling going, he will win this fight. It depends on the Br- Brazil effect, how it affects him, and and if Nunes rise to the occasion be- because of that. I don't think that happens. I think Lentz, I'm picking the opposite I did the CB fight. I think Lentz will get his wrestling going. And I think this could actually turn into a fight of the night. Just a, just a, a scramble, mad dash, keep on going, trade in, change level, slam, get back to the feet, you know, just a barn burner. But I, I have I have Lentz getting the W. Yeah, Lentz is an all-American wrestler, and I think he's going to really frustrate Nunez. Um Edson Barbosa, the return. dude, the return of Edson Barbosa coming off his first loss, first career loss, a knockout to Jamie Vardner, like which stopped that rise to possibly a title shot in 155. Now he's actually training with the former 155 champion Frankie Edgar in New Jersey, um, and this guy Lucas Martins that he's fighting. All right, this is his first uh, fight in the UFC. He's a shoot box guy. All right, but uh, he's finished 11 of his 12 opponents. All in a year in like three months. He's had 10 fights last year alone. All right. Taking on Barbosa is a little bit too much for him to take right now. Yeah. And you know what? The, the Those those wins, that streak might might look impressive on paper. But when you look a little exactly. deeper, it's who has been fighting. He's been fighting guys that are put there to, to, to beat. He's been built. They've been building him, papering him. So I, I as well, I'm going with our uh, Barbosa the return. And I think in impressive fashion. Yes. I think if everybody wants to see the rest of our picks... And wants to see all of our picks, go to MMAFightCorner.com and we'll have the complete list of picks there. But right now, I just want to get to the news because we haven't done this in a couple of weeks. And Heidi's got so much news to get to. Do we still have a bumper? No, we're going to do one right now. Heidi's hit list. Thanks a lot, Billy. (laughs) And so today we have the Bellator 85 ratings in. You guys did say they were up. They're in fact up 394% since season seven. They uh, scored a 1.2 rating on the Pitbull and Pat Curran fight. 1.1 million viewers watched in the first hour. 1.2 million watched the Pitbull and Curran fight. They also had a total overall viewing of 938,000 during the duration of the uh, this show. Also, UFC on Fuel TV 7, that's the one in London. Dustin Poirier is stepping in for an injured Dennis Seaver. We have uh, him facing Cub Swanson. So that's Ooh, another one yeah, of Coke's teammates. Joe, you just mentioned that. That's a, that's a stellar fight. Stellar fight. Yeah, I'm excited. 
The UFC executive of affairs, Mark Ratner, said that there is an international fight night bonus delay in payment that's going to happen pending outcomes of drug test results. If fighters don't test clean, basically, they're not going to get their cash incentives uh, anymore paid out to them. And the cash incentives are usually paid on fight night, but they're not going to happen anymore. When you say they're going to That's international? International, because the the UFC takes care of all of the international drug testing. Gotcha. So they're not going to give out any bonuses until all those tests come back clean. Rightfully so, dude. Rightfully so. Because these guys have been trying to get away with stuff overseas because they don't think they're going to get caught. They do. Also, for the first thing overseas, <laughs> the UFC actually hired a commission this time. Uh, the International Mixed Martial Artists Federation uh, will be overseeing the Brazil testing and procedures. So they do have a new, I guess, outlook and way to try to monitor all of that. Uh, <laughs> The UFC also has nine fighters that were cut today, or not necessarily today, but as per the roster on UFC.com, we are now less nine fighters, most likely to make way for the Strike Force fighters that were added to the roster. Those names are Chad Griggs, Nick Penner, Marcus Levasseur, John Kofer, Joey Gambino, Jeff Hewlin, Jared Papazian, Yashahiro Urushitani, and Henry Martinez. So that's a all, all of them have been released wow. from the UFC. Now, how much of this goes back to though the the mix up with Josh Barnett? Hello, Bellator. I don't know if anybody knew this, right. but the other day Josh Barnett's name was on the UFC and his fighter profile was on the UFC fighter page. But it's a mix up. It, it was a mix up because right. it was just some old strike force stuff. And then I guess upon looking at it, people were like, "Wait, we've got some people on here that Brock Lesnar <laughs> that should not be on there. here." So right. I guess they they realized and they clean house. So some of these guys may have been cut. A few weeks ago, it's just getting known now. Yeah. Do, do you think Bro- uh, uh, Barnett should have been brought over? I'd like to see him. He brings a hefty price tag, and also, you know, with that whole wrestling in Japan thing, who knows? Right. You know, I'd like to see him in the. Who UFC do you think he stacks up against to win the heavyweight division in the UFC? Anybody, in my opinion. Really? I, I, in uh, yeah. my opinion, I think Josh Barnett, for the longest time, was rightfully so the number two heavyweight in the world, and I'd at least keep him in the number in the top five right now. Uh, I think just uh, I think number six, maybe five. I think Junior beats him. I think Kane beats him. I think Alistair. I, I, I think don't think Alistair. Alistair run. Yeah, uh, depends on the takedowns, but um, yeah, maybe top five. I'm with you. Wow. Well, there you have it. Remember, for all the picks, go to MMAFightCorner.com. And we want to thank Eric Koch for joining us, and we want to thank you, the fight fan, as well, for all the exclusive interviews. Go to MMAFightCorner.com. Get your picks, interviews, everything else. We're going to be joining you. Back here next week, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Until then, everybody be good. Enjoy the fights this weekend. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. Peace.